So now we go to gallbladder pathology. Gallbladder right here. What is the function of the gallbladder? The function is to store, concentrate, and then secrete bile to help in fat digestion. And that's the bile produced in the liver. Now the bile will go out of the gallbladder into the cystic duct and then into the common bile duct and then through the pancreatic duct into the duodenum. Okay, that's how it works. So now we're going to talk about pathologies of the gallbladder and the biliary tract. First is the biliary tract disease. There's two of them that I talked about. Primary sclerosis and cholangitis. And the second one was biliary, uh, primary biliary cholangitis. So primary sclerosis and cholangitis, it's uh, inflammation and fibrosis of the intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts. So bile ducts both in and outside of the liver. So it's inflammation and fibrosis. And this is of unknown origin, but it just happens, and that's PSE, inflammation and fibrosis of the bile ducts. And this fibrosis, when you get layering of fibrosis, it's going to cause onion skinning. Okay, fibrosis, 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 you get onion skinning. And on gross appearance, what you get is normally you have a bile duct like this. But based on this fibrosis, you're going to get dilations of the bile duct. And you get it stricturing, again more fibrosis, dilation, stricturing, and so on gross appearance, it's going to look like beaded appearance. So that's PSC, you get onion skinning and beaded appearance of the bile ducts thanks to the inflammation of and fibrosis. The people who get it are middle aged men, and the presentation, how do you think these guys are going to present? You're going to get blockage of bile ducts, what are you going to see? Remember, the key word here is obstructive jaundice. Whenever you see blockage of bile ducts, the answer is obstructive jaundice. And what was obstructive jaundice? Remember, it's pale stools, dark urine, jaundice, pruritus. And you also see um, hepatosplenomegaly. You'll see the rest of it. It's kind of blocked right here. But there's also hem um, hepatosplenomegaly. Again, your, your bowel can't drain. Your liver gets bigger. Associations with PSC are ulcerative colitis and pianca, okay, PSC and pianca are associated, okay, and then you also have an increased risk of cholangial carcinoma, uh, that would be the cancer of the, the bile ducts. Next we have primary biliary cholangitis, that's PBC, this one is autoimmune mediated, autoimmune destruction of the intrahepatic bile ducts, okay, autoimmune is the key word here. Here the keyword was inflammation and fibrosis. Autoimmune is the keyword in PVC. So the demographic you're gonna see it is middle aged woman. It's very common. That's what, that's the type of person who gets these autoimmune problems, okay? Again, presentation, same thing. It's a obstructive jaundice presentation because you have destruction of intrahepatic bile ducts, so bile can't flow out of the liver into the gallbladder and to the duodenum. And then the associations here are this is an autoimmune disease, so you have Autoantibodies. Here it's the anti mitochondrial antibody. Okay, you're gonna see that a lot. You're gonna get tested on this to know anti mitochondrial antibody for PVC. And again, this is autoimmune disease, middle aged women. So you're gonna see a lot of other autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Sjogren's syndrome, scleroderma, celiac disease, rheumatoid arthritis, all these autoimmune diseases that you see in middle aged women. So it's very just, it all fits together here. The other one, uh, I want to add one more thing is that this is primary biliary cholangitis. You can also have a secondary biliary cholangitis. So primary is due to destruction of intrahepatic bile ducts due to autoimmune problem. Secondary is when you have destruction of the intrahepatic bile ducts due to an obstruction further downstream. And that's going to, obstruction further downstream, what's going to happen to the bile? It's going to back up. And same as always, all these other obstruction back up, increased in pressure, um, and then you basically compression of blood, blood vessels to the bile ducts, you get destruction, and then that's how you get secondary biliary cholangitis. So that's it for our biliary tract diseases. Uh, make sure you know the stuff in this chart. The next thing we're going to talk about is gallstones. Gallstones are solid round stones in the gallbladder. These can pre pre precipitate from cholesterol or pigment. Okay. 
Now, the thing to note is they don't cause symptoms when they're just sitting in the gallbladder, okay? When they're just sitting here, you don't get any symptoms from that. They're just chilling there. You only get symptoms when these gallstones leave the gallbladder and go to the ducts. And then, as you can see, they may cause obstruction in the ducts, and that's how you're going to get symptoms. So, looking at cholesterol stones, um, cholesterol stones make up the majority of gallstones that you see. And my question is for you is, are they going to be radio-opaque or radiolucent? Radio-opaque means that, the, um, that they'll... They'll take up the x-rays and so you'll be able to see them on x-ray. Radiolucent means they won't. And the key is to look at this. What is it made of? Is there any heavy metals there that will that will take up the x-ray stuff? And the answer is made of cholesterol, so it's not. So usually it's going to be radiolucent. However, occasionally it will be radiopaque thanks to calcification. So calcification will be seen on the x-rays. Now the risk factors for this is, let me just, let me underline radiolucent. Risk factors here are the four F's, okay? Female, fat, 40, and fertile. The four F's. And finally, you also have Crohn's disease. And I want to explain why. Estrogen increases secretion of cholesterol into the bile. Being fertile influences this further because in pregnancy, women have increased progesterone and estrogen, and progesterone causes smooth muscle relaxation in the gallbladder. So you're going to get bile stasis, and that's also going to um, help stone formation, okay, and being fat just, I think of it as having, you have more cholesterol, so you, that's why, female fat, 40, fertile, Crohn's disease is a risk factor, because in Crohn's disease, you have, again, what, where was the most commonly affected area of Crohn's disease, most commonly affected area was ileum, and what do we say with bile, what happens with bile, because in Crohn's disease, there's, affected in ileum, there's decreased bile reabsorption, and so now you have, uh, you lose more bile, there's more, less, uh, so now you have less bile acids, which normally prevent your cholesterol precipitation. So you have less of that, now your cholesterol precipitates. So female fat 40, fertile the 4S, and then Crohn's disease. Now looking at pigment stones, remember, now this is the, the minority of stones, 25% of stones, and these can be either made of black pigment or brown pigment. Black pigment stones are made from calcium bilirubinate, okay? So where do we get bilirubin from? What, um, remember our lecture? It's from hemolysis of red blood cells and the breakdown of heme. So hemolysis is a risk factor for these black pigment stones. Now will this be radio-opaque or radiolucent? Again, the answer is we look at what it's made of, and there's a calcium here. So that's a heavy metal, so that will be radio-opaque. It will be seen on x-rays. Finally, brown pigment stones arise from bacteria and biliary parasite infection. These infections lead to a metabolism that favor the formation of these stones. And these will be radiolucent, okay? These are just made of pigment, so they won't be seen, okay? So again, gallstones, stones in the gallbladder, asymptomatic, unless they go out and obstruct ducts. They're made of either cholesterol or pigment, cholesterol the majority, cholesterol or radiolucent, risk factors female fat 40, um, due to the estrogen, progesterone, which increase cholesterol secretion and uh, increase gallbladder stasis. Crohn's disease decreases bile acids, so cholesterol is easier precipitated. Pigment stones, the minority, black or brown pigment. Pigment stones, black pigment stones from hemolysis, brown pigment stones from infection. Now, I'm going to talk more about problems with problems that the gallstones can cause. Okay, I'm going to talk about some terms. Cholelithiasis, remember, lithiasis just means stone, so stone in the gallbladder. Presence of stone in the gallbladder um, It's not a disease until it causes symptoms. Now, the first thing we can have is uncomplicated gallstone disease. We also call this biliary colic. We're going to talk about all these other diseases for that gallstones can cause in a second. But this is pain from the gallbladder contracting against the gallstone stuck in the biliary duct, specifically the, the cystic duct, right, right outside the gallbladder. We can also have complicated gallstone disease, and this refers to the complications, which can include acute cholecystitis inflammation in the gallbladder, cholodocolithiasis, which is when it's in the in the common bile duct, cholangitis, which is inflammation in the common bile duct, and acute pancreatitis, inflammation in the pancreas, and you can have a gallstone ileus, which is when the gallstone gets into the duodenum, into the small intestine. So I'm going to talk about all of these uncomplicated and complicated gallstone diseases now. So, biliary colic. First of all, I want to say this is a misnomer, okay? Colic is a misnomer. Okay, first of all, you get pain from gallbladder contracting against a stone temporarily stuck in the cystic duct. Cystic duct right here. 
okay? But this pain is not colicky in nature. The pain is constant. It lasts from minutes to hours. Eventually, it does disappear, but when it is present, it's constant. And it arises from the stone. Um, when you eat, you, you basically lead to CCK release. Gallbladder contracts. Gallbladder contraction will move that stone out. It's going to cause blockage. And now you're going to get increased pressure with, with, the, with the gallbladder contracting. So that's going to cause pain. And it's going to be painful until eventually the gallbladder is going to relax and the stone is going to dislodge and come back into the gallbladder. And so that, the pain is going to dissipate. But, our, but this is not a colicky pain because a colicky pain is a pain that waxes and wanes. Okay. So again, I just, I just talked about that. And again, this is a constant pain and it's going gonna, it's gonna to dissipate. Now, acute cholecystitis is an infection of the gallbladder, and uh, usually it occurs due to when the when the gallstone gets stuck in the cystic tract and it doesn't go back. Okay. Again, it's same as all those other obstructive causes of infection, where gallbladder causes stasis, causes the bile to not be able to leave, and then you get bacterial overgrowth, you get increased pressure in the wall, and that's going to predispose to infection. Now. Cholecystitis inf infection of the gallbladder can also occur in the absence of gallstones. This would be called an acalculus cholecystitis. Acalculus means there's no stone. Acalculus cholecystitis, and this is seen in critically ill patients, so patients with severe sepsis, severe burns, and in these patients, there's going to be gallbladder stasis and ischemia. There's going to be low blood levels, the low blood perfusion in the gallbladder. So you can get inflammation and injury to the gallbladder. But again, mainly it arises from a gallstone obstructing that cystic duct. Now the symptoms here are going to be right upper quadrant pain because that's where the gallbladder is in the right upper quadrant of your abdomen. And you're going to have Murphy sign. Do you remember what, remember what Murphy sign was? Remember that's where you place fingers under the ribs in the right upper quadrant and have them inspire. And this is a positive Murphy sign if they stop partway through inspiration because of pain. And that's because when they inspire, it's going to bring the gallbladder up closer to the finger, and that pressure is going to cause pain, and they're going to have to stop breathe and stop the inspiration, or else it's just too painful for them. Now, you can have pain radiation to the right scalpula. That's because you can have inflammation in the phrenic nerve, which is around here, and phrenic nerve will refer to the right scalpula. This is an infection, so again, you have inflammatory symptoms and signs. And what laboratory value will be increased in this disease that we talked about, specific to the to the bile ducts, and we said that alkafos will be increased. Okay, now how do we diagnose this? Problems with the gallbladder, you diagnose with right upper quadrant ultrasound. Okay, it's as simple as that. Gallbladder problems, right upper quadrant ultrasound. If your ultrasound isn't diagnostic, you can do a HIDA scan, or you can call, which is also called cholecystography. Cholecystography. I mean, I don't know how to say it. Basically, what you do is you put some put some uh, markers into your into the veins. Markers taken up. It's basically taken up by the liver and it's treated like bile. So it's gonna be secreted into the bile ducts, and normally it goes into the gallbladder. But if you have acute cholecystitis thanks to a gallstone, then it's gonna be blocked up. So this this stuff that you just injected in this in this HIDA scan is not able to enter the gallbladder. So if you don't see this stuff in the gallbladder, it's going to suggest obstruction of this cystic duct here. Okay, so again, cholecystitis, infection of the gallbladder, thanks to gallstone blocking it. You can have right upper quadrant pain, Murphy sign, inflammatory signs and symptoms, all make sense. Right upper quadrant ultrasound or HIDA scan. Now, next thing is a gallstone ileus. Again, this is a misnomer. This is a bowel obstruction, not an ileus. Remember, ileus was hypermotility, but this is not hypermotility. This is obstruction of the bowel thanks to a large gallstone. The gallstone, let's say you have a fat gallstone here, it's going to cause a lot of pressure, and it's going to erode this part of the, the gallbladder, and it's going to erode through the duodenum. So now your gallstone is going to enter your duodenum straight through here, and there's a little fistula tract that it's created. And it's going to go, go, go through the small intestine, and it's going to get trapped at the ileocecal valve ili the, between the ileum and the cecum. And that's where it's going to get trapped, okay? And it's going to cause obstruction. So that's not good. And what you can see sometimes is you can see air in the biliary tree. And why would that happen? Normally you do not see air here, okay? But if you have this fat fistula that we just created, let's see, there's a fat fistula here. Air from the your GI tract 
will be able to enter your gallbladder and then into your g biliary tree. And so you see air in the biliary tree. This is called pneumobilia, and you see this in a gallstone ileus. So next we have ascending cholangitis. This is infection of the biliary tree, usually due to an obstructing stone, as we see in this picture here. And then you have infection, and it's ascending. You can ascend up the biliary tree into the liver. So the clinical features of this disease are the charcoal triad. There's a triad of jaundice because we have obstruction of the biliary tree. We have right upper quadrant pain because infection in the right upper quadrant. And then we have fever. It's an infection. Okay. So charcoal triad, jaundice, right upper quadrant pain, and fever. Remember this triad for ascending cholangitis. Now, more severe cases will have... Um, will have hypotension and mental status changes because infection travels, it spreads, and eventually it can become systemic and become very serious. So this is a very serious disease, and it can be life-threatening if the infection is spread. Uh, last thing I want to add is that jaundice is usually only seen in, in... For these gallbladder diseases, we usually don't see jaundice because, you, because usually this part, the this bio tree is not obstructed. Remember, if you... If you um, you obstruct the, the cystic duct, bile can still flow, so you're not going to get jaundice. But in this case, the, cyst, the common bile duct is obstructed, so bile can't flow, and now you can get jaundice. So this is a differentiating feature for other gallbladder problems. Now we have porcelain gallbladder. What is this? Porcelain, you can think of it as very fragile, okay? It's very, so it's this calcified and fibrotic gallbladder due to chronic inflammation. And so this chronic inflammation then also predisposes you to having gallbladder carcinoma. So what you do is you, if you see a patient with porcelain gallbladder, you need to remove that gallbladder prophylactically to prevent the risk of development of gallbladder cancer. Speaking of gallbladder cancer, this is a malignant cancer arising from the glandular epithelium lining the gallbladder. Again, it usually results from chronic inflammation, again leading to um, uh, uh, genetic changes, mutations, insults, and then development of cancer. And the risk factors, so inflammation, example from chronic cholecystitis or a porcelain gallbladder. Now the clinical features here are going to be um, obstructive jaundice. Again, you get this, this cancer can basically end up obstructing your ducts and grow and obstruct your ducts and cause obstructive jaundice. And you have corvocerocyte. What is corvocerocyte? This is basically jaundice plus a palpable, non-tender gallbladder. You can feel the gallbladder, but it doesn't, doesn't hurt when you press it. Jaundice and a palpable, non-tender gallbladder is corvocerocyte, okay? And this raises concern for an obstructive cancer in the biliary system. So this can be either a gallbladder cancer or a pancreatic cancer. And when it obstructs the biliary system, you get sign, which is what, again? Jaundice plus a non-tender but palpable gallbladder. Okay, so that's it for our gallbladder problems.